Okay, Rasamay will read. Uh, I will just say that last Saturday we were reading verse 198 from Vilasa, uh, from uh, Radha Rasa Sudanidi and 199. And because uh, these two verses are very close and connected, and also today we will continue to read 200 and 201 because these four verses are complete in one particular lila and it was very interesting actually how all this lila starts to appear in the heart in the mind of Prabodhananda Saraswati and first of all, in 198 words, he is praying to Radhika. I want to be a guest. I'm hankering. I'm burning in desire to be the guest on the pathways on Vrindavan's Kundas. And please, if you don't appear to me, at least I will continue to aspire for your service. So in this first verse, 198, he put the proper consciousness full of humility and eagerness. And he is addressing Radhika through his Sadak Vej. And then, in verse 199, he sees Radhika, how she is appearing while he is sitting on the bank of Yamuna. She is appearing with her golden aura, and Sripad immediately stands up, approaching Radhika and helping her to prepare the Kunja for Mohan, who's supposed to come. So this is the second verse, 199, which is opening now the lila, which will start, and Rasamai will continue. I just gave this small introduction because I just want to remember what we read before, so that we have complete picture what's going on. Because sometimes verses, especially in Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi, are connected. One, two, three verses are connected or more. Like, for example, in Vilapa Kusumanjali, when Radhika is going to visit Nandishwara, also there are seven, eight, nine, I don't know, verses which are connected. And we can have clear vision by the mercy of our Acharyas, clear vision how Lila progressively is developing. So this is also very nice for meditation and also is very nice for preparation. How to put our consciousness in a, and heart and feelings in a proper tune. So proper tune, Prabhupada Saraswati is putting here in this verse 198, I want to be your guest. I don't want to force you. But this is my right. <laughs> I am begging Madhukari from you, like a guest. But this Madhukari I need, and this Madhukari is your mercy which I need, because with this Madhukari I want to serve you. 
So this is my only desire. And if you think that it's not that I'm not proper person for that, or maybe you have some your own reasons why you should not give to me this madukari, I will uh, continue to aspire, aspire, aspire for devotional service to your lotus feet. So this is the mood of someone who has a pure desires, pure heart, pure love, and great burning eagerness. We can see here humility together with humbleness. Uh, sorry, sorry, no, I didn't want to say humility together with passion. <laughs> with passion. So, this art of behaving, we should learn from our beloved Acharyas and also from our beloved Gurudev. Zadir. Jai Shri So this is verse 200 from Sri Sri Radha Rasa Sudanti. All glories to the Queen of Vrindavana, who is the heart of all clever girls. Who is like love personified and who is the spotless treasure of Sri Krishna, who is himself the essence of a notion of rasa? All glories to the Queen of Rindavan who is the heart of all the clever girls, who is like love personified, and who is the spotless treasure of Sri Krishna, who is himself the essence of an ocean of rasa. So we can see here why Radhika is the queen of Rindavan. And Prabhupada Nanda Saraswati is mentioning just few qualities, symptoms, why Radhika is the queen of Rindavan. We also know that Yashoda is very often Addressed like the queen of Vrindavan. But there is another queen, Radhika. And Prabhupada Saraswati is continuing in this world to glorify Jayati, all glories to queen of Vrindavana, because. You are the heart of all clever girls. You are the heart of all gopis. You are the crown jewel of all gopis. Then he's continuing. You are love personified personification of love. This is the reason why you are queen of Rinda, of Madhuryaras. You are also queen of Ridavana because you are spotless treasure, spotless wealth of Sri Krishna, of his heart. And he is essence of ocean of rasa. And you are the spotless 
wealth, treasure of someone who is essence of all rasas, who is set, giving the pleasure to all rasas, and all devotees in different rasas are giving him pleasure. But you, oh my dear Radhi, oh, you are the queen of his heart. And especially it is visible in very intimate situations when you are together and your maidservants can witness it, that you are real, real queen of Rindavana because you are the spotless wealth and treasure of your beloved Mohan. And he is speaking it because he saw how Radhika is eager to prepare Kunja to receive his beloved. beloved. She is burning of desire to give him a pleasure. And all her face is blooming or her body is full of passion. She is decorating the kunja and Manjari is helping her in this decoration. So she is the queen of Rindavan because all these qualities which Prabhupada Dananda Saraswati is mentioned here in this verse 200. If someone wants just to jump with sharing, please don't hesitate in anything. This is spontaneous. That. Srimati has finished decorating the thrusting kunja and now simply waits for Krishna's arrival. When the appointed time passes and Mohana still did not show up, the ocean of Srimati's anxiety increases. Finally, she is unable to remain patient and she pitifully laments. Alas, Hari did not show up in the forest on the appointed time. If I cannot serve him, then all my youthful beauty is useless. Alas, of whom shall I take shelter now? Now, that I have been deceived by my friend's words. Many times our love Guru they have said that by reading Radha Rasha Shudanidi, we will know Radhika much better. Because so many qualities of Srimati Radharani, who is embodiment of love, is described especially in Radha Rasa Sudhaniti, to know Radhika, to know our beloved Ishtadev. Because if we know someone, we, we love him. And Radhika, how to know Radhika? The best way is to know her feelings, 
and she is embodiment of feelings. So, when Sadaka knows very well and feels his beloved Ishtadev, in this case, Shimateradarani, then his feelings and understanding and awareness is increasing, increasing, and becoming more, more, and more, and more higher. So here, we can see few of Radhika's feelings who are very connected with the Lilas. Whatever we hear, we should always listen, meditate, in connection with Lilas. And Radhika here is waiting and waiting. Krishna, who didn't appear in a proper time. And now, we, by the words of Anantadas Babaji, also here, we can feel and touch also her feelings with our spiritual feelings. And it said, the ocean of Srimati's anxiety increases. How much anxiety is in Radhika, in personification of love, in someone who is completely, is drowning in love, so much anxiety. This is our Radhika. She is full of anxiety. And these anxieties are a reflection of her love. And they are always increase and increase and increase, never ending. Then she cannot remain patient. She cannot remain patient. She's so much in anxiety and disturbed that she cannot remain patient. Calm, cool. Rajeshwari? Yes. yes. Please. Yeah, thank you. She cannot be calm. She cannot be dira anymore, peaceful. Then she pitifully, with great sorrow, sorrow, she is lamenting to her beloved girlfriend. Pitifully, with sorrow, she is crying, actually. When we say lamenting, it means crying. So these different kinds of feelings are the qualities of our beloved Shimati Radhara. Anxiety, disturbance, lack of patience, feeling of pitifulness or sorrow, and lamentation. Just a few. But we can understand with whom we want to be, with which kind of personality we want to be so close to love and to serve. We should know who is our beloved Ishtade, what his, she is thinking, what she is feeling, what she desires, what she doesn't like, and so on and so on. So knowing the Radhika's feeling, we know her personality deeper and better, more and more. And automatically attachment will increase 
and attraction will increase, or we can say all together will bring devotee on the stage of pure love. Attraction, attachment, and then stage of pure, pure love. By the mercy of Radhika and her maidservants. We can see from the words. Uh, Rasa may do want to read again when Radhika is lamenting. Ah. Alas, Hari did not show up in the forest on the appointed time. If I cannot serve him, then all my youthful beauty is useless. Alas, of whom shall I take shelter now, now that I have been deceived by my friend's words? So, Radhika is speaking from the bottom of her heart. Of whom shall I take a shelter? Of whom? Radhika doesn't have anyone else to take a shelter than her beloved Mohan. She cannot take a shelter in his other forms, which are present in other different places. She can take shelter only in Kishore Krishna, Vrajendra Nanda, Dira Lalita Krishna. And in the same time, full shelter, complete shelter, Krishna can take only in Shiratika. So this is the qualities of mutual, pure mutual love. Yes, Sunitiji? Ah, you already see me eagerly yes. waiting. <laughs> I love that, what you give to us, your feelings. And I was just thinking, every day I pray to Srimati Radhika, to Gurudev, to all the Vaishnavas, that some drop of mercy will come in my heart, that I can develop the, you know, like a perspective on all this, what is described here, that is like fresh and new. So I, when you were talking, I was just thinking, well, you know, she is like, of whom shall I take shelter now? But maybe the late servants, we would also think, of whom will Krishna take shelter now? He cannot be happy without the shelter of our Swamini. He is also not fully fulfilled. In this way, they are increasing each other's desires for each other. It's not a dual thing. And I must say that, honestly, often I struggle with this. Because I have a, a tendency in my heart to project the human feelings on the feelings of Radha and Krishna. That is very unfortunate, but I am praying for the day that this will be purified. So today, again, in the Russian Zoom, something beautiful happened that uh, Damoda was exclaiming all his wonderful feelings. And then all of a sudden he said, Rupa Manjari is uh, massaging uh, Mohan's feet. So you know who he is massaging? He's massaging, or she, she's massaging uh, Radhika's heart. So I thought, in that moment, I thought, yes, like Krishna is Radhika's heart, Radhika is Krishna's heart, so they are each other's heart. 
then it's a nice feeling to feel that mandris are massaging Radhika's heart. And then the new and new and new feelings arose in my heart and I was very thankful for this opening, which is, is, is like a new fuel for bhajan. So not uh, come into this trap of the mind while reading or listening the pastimes that Radha and Mohan are like ordinary human men or women. No, but they are, you know, the supreme love personified and the supreme taste personified, ecstasy personified in such a lovely, how you say, encounter of love where each tries to always outdo the other in making each other happy. This is such a, you know, it's such a completely opposite experience from what we have here in this material world that I personally always feel so thankful when from the words of Gurudev and all the Vaishnavas, some drops come in my heart that I can realize or remember, yes, they are not a man or not a woman. They seem to be. They appear like that as a cowherd boy and a cowherd girl in the sweet village of Vrindavan. But actually, they are personified happiness, personified bliss, ananda, and rasa in one person also. They are separated like this, and also they come together to experience it together. So when you were reading this, that how she is feeling, at the same time, in my heart, this feeling came, yeah, he will not be satisfied if he looks somewhere else. You know, it's not that it's the pitiful Radhika only that she is missing him. He is also missing her. He got lost somewhere. He doesn't know the way. He got bewildered. He is such an innocent devotee. We have to protect him. But like this, the maidservants also think how to bring them together, how to assist them. And it's completely beyond duality. So I wanted to share these feelings that were so precious to me. And I realized more and more that how precious are these Zooms where we are meeting, we are sitting together, listening from each other, and we are sharing our our realizations and sometimes also our desires for realizations. And it was very interesting to listen to uh, Damodara's, Damodara Prabhu's uh, realizations this morning, how he is feeling it, you know, when they meet. And I never had this perspective that, yes, Krishna is Srimati Radhika's heart. So I thought, yes, we have to serve him through her desires, because she is so happy when he is happy and vice versa. And actually, all that seems to be so pitiful when Swamini is, of course, in lamentation because he does not appear, there is some hidden reason behind it to increase the feelings. Because that is the nature of the spiritual love always the feelings are increased. There is always, always, and will always be a happy end. That's why we love these love stories with happy endings. So in Radha and Mohan's love story is always a happy ending. And, uh, to feel this and to meditate on this is very um, auspicious and very inspiring. So that's what I wanted to share. Thank you, Guru Nasuna, and all the devotees for your blessings, for your love, and for your listening, lovingly listening ears and eyes. Thank you, Didi. It's so nice. It's so important what you said, actually. Because we, we have to know who are these beautiful personalities are. We cannot equalize them with ordinary boy and girl. And in the beginning, 
when we are listening about their loving pastimes, we still are thinking and feeling through our materialistic senses. But it's very important to be aware of it. This is the first step. And second step is try to overcome this. It's because it is obvious that for many of us, because we don't have so much Sukritis, Bhakti, real Raj Sukritis, we cannot dive deeply in their ocean of mutual love, which is completely pure, pure, pure. Narottam Das Thakur is saying their love is like a hundred thousand molten gold. And it's very interesting, actually, that he, he could say million, million times melted gold or billion. It doesn't matter how much, because when you are melting the gold, it's enough five times to melt the gold that all impurities are vanished. But when you say hundred thousand, so it means that is completely spiritual, transcendental. And I don't have, Narutam Das Thakur is speaking from this position, I don't have other words to explain their hearts, their love. And this is the reason why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu first, in one of the conversations, he asked, please explain me who are the Radha and Krishna. I want to know them. And when I think Ramananda Rai, or maybe someone else, I'm sorry if I made a mistake, but the point is not the person, but <laughs> the question and answer is that when he explained that this, they are embodiment of pure love and that their hearts melting like a gold. And that they are source of all love without any impurities. Then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, okay, now I understand who are they and now continue to speak me more about their love. So first he established who are they. Like Sunitiji said, not ordinary girls, girl and boy. But we have to gradually, <laughs> slowly overcome this consciousness. And this is Swarup, which is helping us. And we need the time. More on less. Depends on each person. Thank you so much. The maid servant sees Sri Radha as love personified. Sri Jiva Goswami says in Priti Sandarbha, love of God is the essence of God's energy of bliss. And Chaitanya Charitamrita says, the essence of the pleasure energy is prema. The essence of prema is bhava. And the highest stage of bhava is named mahabha. Goddess Radha is the very form of that Mahabhav. So this is the one of the crucial, essential words in Chaitanya Charitamrita for someone who really knows 
wants to know who is Radhika. Who is that beautiful nectarian personality is? And Jiva goes, uh, first he said, Mad, maid servant sees Radha as love personified, without any philosophy. <laughs> she is personification of love, and I don't care for anything else. But Acharyas knows that they have to give us explanations, because we are not on the position of pure love, and we need some explanations from the point of energies, Hladini Shakti, and so on and so on. But this is very nice. But when we assign with this and accept that, then freely we can say, okay, but she is personification of Allah. And this is all Siddhanta, all Tattva, all philosophy. Everything is this simple sentence and feeling. She is personification of love. Then, if it's necessary, and very often is necessary, we should go to understand the meaning of these words that it said, as she is the essence, uh, sorry, essence of pleasure, energy, is Prema. Who is Prema? Jai Shira. Essence of pleasure giving energy, Hladini Shakti, is Shirati. She is the essence. The essence of Prema is Bhava. The essence of this Prema. is bhava, emotions, emotions. Prema cannot exist without emotions. This is synonym. You, know, you cannot have a love without emotion. We need emotions, and then love appears. We need emotions, all different emotions. Are present simultaneously in love. So, this giving pleasure energy is prema. So, it means that constitutional, natural position of prema is to give, 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 give pleasure to beloved Krishna. So, constitutional position of Radhika is only to give, to give, to give. And then, constitutional position of Jiva is to be with energy which is giving and giving and giving this pleasure. And this is the reason why it's said, when Jiva is, is coming in the contact with Prema or Mahabhava, automatically Jiva becomes this Mahabhava. Or we can say automatically is realizing his Swarup. When Jiva comes in a contact with Mahabhava and is fully pervading with Mahabhava, then it realizes his swarup, her swarup. So then, and the highest stage of Bhava is Mahabhava. Higher stage. Different stages, different devotees has different bhavas in their respectful relationship. 
But the highest stage is present in Shema Tiratara. It, it sounds philosophically and it is philosophically. <laughs> Yeah, you remember, I was going to ask you if you remember the, the example from Chaitanya Chaitamrita. It's like the sugar that is uh, uh, crystallizing to different, different degrees. Mm -hmm. When you melt sugar, it becomes molasses and then it becomes, you know, like candies and then rock sugar. I think this is kind of the example of the different uh, uh, levels of, of love that are Shemati Radhika's expertise or circumstances that she is vibrating in and that we are experiencing or maybe realizing it. Because I have heard also one devotee speak one time. Maybe you can say something about that. I have heard this now so much. No, I mean, this was only the example where it is written in uh, Chaitanya Chaitamrita that the crystallization of sugar, Shimati Radhika's, you know, is an example of the different kinds of Prema, Bhava, and Mahabhava stages. But I would like to ask you and also all the other devotees what are you doing? When it seems to you that this kind of like knowledge is just like you hear it, it again and again and you know the knowledge, but you just don't feel it yet. What are you doing about this or with this when it happens in your consciousness, in your heart? When the body not far long away, long ago, told me that I hear all the classes and um I, I sometimes also uh, translate them to my friends, but just is that I don't feel it. I understand. I understand. And I'm a very boring person. I'm, <laughs> I don't I'm say always re I'm, I'm very boring person, really, because I'm always speaking the same thing, you know, which I'm practicing. And that is very boring for some, many. The only solution is to connect our feelings with the feelings of Acharyas. If we miss that point, we will miss everything. We can know the philosophy from A to Z and opposite. We can know everything, everything, really. So many devotees know amazing things. First time I hear this. But like you said, after some times, they said, I don't feel anything. Why? Because the, when they were reading the book, they couldn't connect their heart with the heart of persons who were reading. And this is my conclusion, my personal conclusion. Because if we don't connect our heart with Prabhupada, who is writing the books, if we don't connect the heart with Prabhupada Saraswati here and Anantadas Babaji, we will miss the point, for sure. But if we connect our heart, then it doesn't matter if we know everything, no. Because Manjari said, she's personification of love and that's it because she feels and devotee who is in his taibab who is completely absorbed in his spiritual position even if he didn't attain CD, he can feel it he he he's able to feel Acharya's feeling, because they open their hearts. Yesterday, on our local creation Zoom Sangha, we were talking about Narottam Das Thakur and how he received the prema 
from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who infused the ri river Padma. And when Narottam came inside of river Padma, he completely changed. Prema touched him and he completely changed him. So, Mahaprabhu did it even before Narottam Das Thakur appears. He gave that prema for future generations before Narottam Das Thakur appears. And when Narottam Das Thakur appears, he humbly receives, like a young boy of 12, 13 years, he received that prema. So, why I'm talking this? Again, I will, <laughs> on the beginning. Because our Acharyas, they infused prema, bhava, sneha, mana, pranaya, rati, ruchi, everything they infused in their words. Their books are this Padma River. For future generations. For us. So if we have a proper consciousness, which are not mental only consciousness, but from the heart consciousness, consciousness from the heart, chitta, then we will understand Prabhupada Saraswati is giving prema, giving his feelings, and his feelings are not separate from prema. His feelings are Mahabhav. And we are coming in the touch with at least one drop. And how I, I will know that it works? Practical question. How I will know that it works? Because first, one first thing will appear in the heart of Sadaka. He will be crazy, mad, out of love for this Acharya. If you are not crazy, mad, out of love with Prabhupada, with Narayan Maharaj, Bhakti Thakur, Jiva Goswami, Rupa Goswami, then it means that we don't feel them. If we are not crazy and mad for the words of our Gurudev, it means that we miss the point. So feelings brings understanding. They are removing the blockages in the mind, in the ego, in the false intelligence, bodily intelligence. But if we cannot do it, Acharya Sadhusi, just stay close to me. Just stay. Don't speculate, just stay with me. And this is the only way. But if person understands, I have to approach with whatever feelings I have, I have to approach to that person. Then the door is opening. And the stream is coming from their heart, not from our heart. I don't have anything in my heart. And I, I don't want this in my, what is in my heart. <laughs> I want stream for, of emotions from their heart. And this is my sadhana. Yes, beautiful. This is, sorry. Uh, no, I think I like it, but you are honest, you know, that if I am not thirsty, then it's, Something that my, you know, my system is out of out of normal order because usually every day we are thirsty. Like you said, we want to connect, we want to feel, and even if I wake up like a dull body, you know, during the day in any activities I can pray, connect, and feel something. That can be little things. That can be big things. It's not 
the, the, the subject, what it is, but to open the heart and the feeling and the perceiving modus, so to say, and the thirst will come. And the more thirsty we become, the more thirsty I can make myself in the heart, then also I can more receive more uh, nectar, the rasa, no? this liquid love, actually. And then it will, something will be felt. But if there's nothing felt, then yeah, it's, it's not anybody else's fault. It's just that I have to check myself. I have to do my homework, like Gurdjieff says. And that I do every day. You know, the, the homework, how to become more feeling, more receiving from Manuvriti to Chittavriti and all these things. So thank you for repeating this and clarifying this once more. I think these things we can, these are practical things, but also very important again and again at least for myself. <laughs> and astonishment, oh yes, I, 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 I remember one other thing. When I become more like a child and not like a thinker, you know, the children, they are just astonished with all the little things that happen to them the whole day because they don't expect anything. Everything that comes, everything that is like a surprise, they are so happy with that. Any sweet they get, any kind of loving uh, attention they get. And so the Swarup, I feel, is the same way. As a maidservant of Shimati Radhika, I try to feel her in every corner, in every situation, in all my friends and all the people that are with me in the day and whether that be in Rindavan or in any other town of the world. But if my heart is connected, that I am the Dasi of Shimadi Radhika, and I, I am, you know, Gurudev has made me qualified, even though I am not qualified, but he has made me qualified with his love and with his mercy and with the possibility of giving me this channel to Shimadi Radhika's Dasi mood. And then it will happen sooner or later. It's only time in between and the blockages that need to be cleared. And it will be cleared, like you said, if we connect to our Acharya's books, that is also their blessings, their kripa for us. And something can happen in my heart also. Their books are a river of prema. Yeah, they are, they are, what Rivers is it? Rivers of Prema. Rivers Nothing. of Yes, just uh, open every, just, you know, open some page and put the finger and you will see that in every sentence is feelings. I will open now. <laughs> I will open and put the, Rasa Lila is a, such a wonderful pastime because Krishna and Gopis are both totally dedicated to the pleasing each other. Feelings. Feelings. They want to please each other. More, one more time. But even these crown jewels of Shyama girls, the gopis, are only kept alive by the boundless ocean of beauty that streams from a beautiful and tender blazing toenails of Sri Radhika. Feelings. They are astonished. Astonishment means intense feeling and when they speak philosophy they are in, infusing also emotions i i, I just opened 100 i don't 132 it was 103 doesn't matter 
we should learn to bath in this river without fear of love. The main problem for conditioned soul is the fear of love. And this fear expands in all levels of our life. But when we overcome the fear of love and understand that only pure love is the only solution, then the blockages, the fears will be removed. And we cannot experience this kind of bliss because of condition, nature of our existence. This is, and this is the reason why Swarup is so necessary. Because this is Bhava Deha. The heart of Manjari is Bhava, Mahabhava. Every toenail in Manjari's toenail is a Mahabhava. Every teeth, every eye is Mahabhava, reflection of Mahabhava. There is no difference. And that's the reason why we need the time. <laughs> and sometimes we are angry. When Guru Deva and our Acharya say slowly, 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 gradually, gradually, gradually. <laughs> <laughs> but the beautiful thing is that these things are finished, accepted in our heart, then the path and progression is going so fast. So fast. That. Next part, please. He is the spotless essence of the ocean of rasa. Who is that ocean of rasa? Sri Krishna. She is the very wealth of Krishna's heart, as Krishna himself admits in Gita Govinda. You are my life. You are my ornament. And you are the jewel in the ocean of my desires. May you always stay in my heart. Please repeat one more time. You are my life. Krishna is saying. You are my ornament. And you are the jewel in the ocean of my desires. May you always stay in my heart. It's so clear how much Krishna loves Srimadharata. <coughs> how much Radhika is his greatest well, because she is always situated in his heart. These words are words of lover, not yogi, not atmarama. 
Not par- Paramatma. Not Dvarakadish. These words are Krishna is speaking specially and only for Radharani. And he is showing how much she loves him, but also how much he loves her. And how much he loves her, he is doing one thing more. When she is, when he is speaking how he is loving Radhika, he is glorifying her. Because he knows I am Raso Vaisaha. Everyone knows for me. I am Akila Rasamrita Murti. I am giving exchanging rasa to everyone. But I am speaking and glorifying the love of Radhika. And what does it mean for me to situate her in my heart? In that way. He is glorifying Shimati Radharani, his love. Speaking how he loves her. And this is the best glorification. And he is giving direction. Take a shelter of my love. Because I am taking only shelter in her. This is the madness, transcendental madness. Because this is the madness of pure love. And we need one drop of the drop of the drop of the drop of that ocean of Radha Mohan's mutual love. That. When someone in the material world finds a jewel, he will sell it to buy things for sense gratification that will contaminate his mind. But the mind of anyone who finds this transcendental jewel of prema will surely become purified and be filled with the same love. Please repeat. When someone in the material world finds jewel, he will sell it to buy things for sense gratification that will contaminate his mind. But the mind of anyone who finds this transcendental jewel of prema will surely become purified and be filled with the same love. Only prema can purify mind and the heart. And this is the why prema is Fifth goal of life. Dharma will not purify the mind. Artha will not purify the mind. Kama will not purify the mind. And this desire for moksha certainly will not purify the mind. Only pure love can purify the mind. And then this mind will be filled, completely filled with the same love. (laughs) So this is the science of love, pure love. 
and we we are we can consider ourselves so fortunate that we can listen about this and little drown in this ocean or river of prema because the prema will always is only ingredient who can purify our mind not austerities not lex 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 of chanting different mantras prema is something which devotee has to hanker like sunniti say i have to be thirsty for that and i'm not thirsty and what should i do now <laughs> only solution is associate with those who are thirsty there is no no other answer actually and we accept it then life become more easier less confusion and more easier <laughs> that's recognize it's boring huh <laughs> no it is very uh, natural and i like your explanation i was just thinking also our nature as conditioned souls is to fuel my mind with the wrong uh contents you know like sometimes we go to gas station to make the car full again like when we go to the gas station to fuel my mind let's say and we put the wrong stuff in there for a long time <laughs> it takes time to get this out again or sometimes even have to suck this out the stuff because you cannot go with this stuff no sometimes we put the wrong gas we need diesel and we put benzene or whatever the names are i don't know all the names but it happens that by mistake i put the wrong fuel i put all this contents in my mind in that consciousness and i didn't even notice how i was polluting myself so much so that there's a foggy feeling of i am stuck so yeah like you say we have to go to the devotees who are thirsty who have a taste and who are in this you know positive positive mindset but i have seen also sometimes it takes time to reset the the wrong fueling and to realize it yes suniti so, this is a beautiful point because when we put the wrong association in our heart like a wrong fuel in the car we have to repair car we have to empty this reservoir of wrong fuel we have to empty mm -hmm. we cannot add 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 in that we have to empty it and then be able to not repeat same mistake again and this is the reason why sadhus are speaking about two points preya and shreya preya is what i think that is good for me i think that this fuel will help me i think that this kind of life will help me this kind of consciousness will help me this kind of practice this kind of association will help me but sadhus they have another conception shreya they know what really helps to my soul not to my body to my soul and they express this in their words direct words or in their books which are full of prema this is good for you don't put like tuniti ji said wrong benzene fuel in your reservoir because you have then the process is going slower than it's necessary it's not necessary to go so slower but we are putting wrong 
fuel. Thank you and very much for this. And now sometimes we are wondering why we get some like poisoning effect, you know, because then you need to detox. It happens also. It happens. Yes. Mental detox needs to yes. take place. And, and it takes time. It takes time and it takes good uh, help of our brothers and sisters or of Guru Dev. It takes time. I have seen it now in also many cases. Those devotees who went deeply into this COVID you know, negativity for three years or something, it takes time now. Even if they realize now, okay, let's get out of it, it's over somehow, or it's not interesting anymore, it takes time. And I know this for myself, if I get into any bad habit, and it takes time to get out of the bad habit, and it takes sometimes discipline and the real strong help also to overcome bad habits which are not favorable. Not favorable, yes. A satsanga is not favorable for devotional service. A satsanga, wrong association, is completely unfavorable for devotional service. And we have to discriminate which kind of sangha will help us and which sangha we have to offer respect, but not to follow. Mm. respect but not to follow this is two different things I respect someone I respect everyone but I just follow few persons it doesn't mean that if I respect shopkeeper <laughs> that I will follow him no I respect To respect all Vaishnavas, it doesn't mean that we have to follow all Vaishnavas. So this is practical. <laughs> For me, practical example. How to apply, and like Sunitiji said, because we have to empty all reservoir and then we have to detoxicate it. Yeah, detoxicate. Oh, yes. To purify it. All the system. So it takes a time. You cannot finish in one, two hours or one, even one, two days. So this is the reason why Acharyas are always emphasizing proper Sangha, proper Sangha, proper Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha. And be careful of Asat Sangha, Asat Sangha, Asat Sangha. And we think that we know better than them. <coughs> So, Radhi, Radhi. The word sampad or opulence in the text can also mean Shri, goddess Lakshmi. Lakshmi, the goddess of wealth, may have come from the ocean of milk. But Prema Lakshmi, Radha, has been churned up from the ocean of Rasa and is therefore superior to the goddess of fortune. What does it mean to churn up from the ocean of rasa. Radhika appeared from the churned up of ocean of rasa. Who is the ocean of rasa? Krishna. And he, she is his internal energy. She is her Swarup Shakti. And in this Swarup Shakti, eternal energy, all emotions, different emotions are present. 
And we, we say eternal Shakti, what does it mean? Eternal energy. Love. He is the person because he has a love. If the God is the person because he has a love, what to speak about us? We are a person because we have emotions and love in the heart. If I don't have a love, emotions in my heart, like Guru they say, you will be like a wood, plastic bottle, plastic bottle, yeah. Love makes us a person. Without love, we are dead matter. So Krishna, without love, is zero, like you, Narayan Maharaj is saying so many times. He is zero <laughs> without Radhika. And we think, oh, well, this is this and that. No, he is really zero. He will never exist before, without this love in his heart. And this is the reason why there is no difference between him, his rupa, and his swarupa. His inner existence. Same thing comes also to us. She is churned up from the ocean of rasa, rasova isaha. So you cannot separate essence of ocean, waves of ocean, from ocean. And these words, which I'm saying now, are pretty impersonal words. Shanti and Acharya are saying, yes, but they are one soul, which be, uh, became two persons. One soul, Eka Deha, Dui Ba, Dui Deha, Eka Atma Dui Deha. So we cannot separate. This is Radha and Krishna. And if we cannot separate them, it means that we are accepting their transcendental, most sublime position. And they are not hum human beings, ordinary boy and girl. That. Gorachandra, do you have something, please? Yes. Where's Gorachandra, do you? Oh. Are you leaving us all alone here? Uh, we don't hear you, Gorachandra. Uh, now? Yes, yes. Now, it's good. For me, it's very difficult to share because I relish so much to listen. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to speak. I am really happy with listening. But I know it is your desire that all devotees should share. So uh, I will say something. In the beginning, we were reading that yeah, love of God is the essence of God's energy of bliss. So God has an energy of blissfulness. <laughs> but there are many things that give some bliss. Like fame, also from fame, some happiness is coming. From wealth, to be very rich, there's also happiness is coming from that. Krishna, he has all these opulences and that gives happiness to him also. 
He likes to fight. It gives him pleasure also to be strong, strange, power, knowledge, everything giving happiness to him. But the essence of that is love. Without love, there's nothing. You can give up wealth for love. You can give up fame if you are in love. You can give up everything if you are in love. But if you give up love for the money, or you give up love for power, then later you will realize that you made a mistake. You will realize that, <laughs> that love is the most important thing. And the essence of that love, the, uh, the essence of that bliss giving energy is love, prema, and the essence of that is uh, bhava, and the essence of bhava is mahabhava. And the personification of mahabhava is Srimati Radhadana. So, but it is not like that she is the essence of the essence of the essence of the essence. At the same time, she is also the source of everything. The essence of the milk is the yogurt, and the essence of the yogurt is the butter, and the essence of the butter is the ghee. But we cannot say that the ghee is the source of the milk. That's not true. But Radharani is the essence of everything, but at the same time she is also the source of everything that gives happiness. And Suniti asking what we can do if we don't become mad, <laughs> like Goranga Sunda saying, we have to become mad by reading the words of our mad Acharyas <laughs> who are mad in love. So I think quality is more important than quantity. It's more important to go deep than to collect more information. The mind has the tendency to always need some new food. Even by reading too much Radharasa Sudhanidhi or Vilapko Sumanjali. Every sentence like Oranga Sundara saying is full of feelings. And sometimes you read one, two pages of Anantara's Babaji, but in the, then you don't know what you read in the beginning already. So, I now we are reading the verse that Srimati Radharani, she decorated the Kunja, everything and is waiting for Krishna, and he is not coming, and how she feels. She becomes anxious. But I don't feel what she is feeling. So why not to use my meditation, not only in this Zoom, why not to try to ask tomorrow morning in my Japa, Radhika, how does it feel? I want to I want to understand your feelings. And why not to keep that for one, two, three, four days without reading something new? Just try to understand how it feels because I don't feel it. So I don't, I'm not mad. <laughs> I'm not crazy. 
So I think, and uh, to pray, always pray. If we read a song of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, we pray to him that he give mercy to us, that the mood is coming, that the mood of Narottam Das Thakur is coming, that feelings of Anantaras Babaji coming to me. We have to pray for that. The Acharyas are merciful, they will give that. And there's a song <laughs> of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, Shri Krishna Veera He. He's starting with, I cannot tolerate the suffering of Radharani when she is separated from Krishna. For their blissful meeting, I would immediately give up my life. So, we have to pray that this mood is coming to us. And yes, also to see our condition as long as we are in gunas, and as long we have to deal with our material, normal life of maintain ourselves in this world, we cannot expect that we are always feel blissful, connected, and everything. So, but we have to continue. And yeah. I'm really choose now what I read and what I listen, not too much. Yeah, we have to take care of our bhajan also. We have to really find out what is good for us and everything else we have to cut. Yeah, so I only pick the cherries. <laughs> rade, rade. <laughs> Thank you very much, Gaurav Chandra. It's so nice. This is practical advice. Just read one sentence. Just read one small paragraph. And meditate. As much as you want. This is practical. Advice, instruction for bhajan. And I remember when Gurudev, when we, Ramani and me met Gurudev first time, first few times, let's say, he always was emphasizing, read just a small quantity of sentences. Don't gather, gather informations. So in that way, the feelings will be infused from Acharya's heart in our heart. We should learn how to... It's not reading, actually. Gorachanda is saying to taste, relishing, not reading. I forgot what I read. I forgot what I spoke, but I want to relish now what I feel, what I read, what I am reading now, I want to feel it. This is technique <laughs> for bhajan. And actually, in this sloka, in this lila, the manjari is seeing that condition of Radharan. How she start lamenting pitifully like this and she can feel also that. So <laughs> the manjari also becomes impatient and has the, the desires growing to bring Radha Mohan together. There's this deep connection that we all have with each other. 
the manjari to radharani and tulsi manjari with rupa manjari and rupa manjari with guru manjari and with us we are all interconnected we all love to share also <laughs> our experiences with radha mohan so it's emanating radharani's mood in this sloka and this leela is emanating it should make us also impatient we also should feel anxiety why he is not coming when he will come what happened what i can do to bring them to that so that is the that is the fuel of the manjari <laughs> that is the fuel of the manjari what she take inside god thank you Srimati is the very heart of all clever girls or the very heart of all cleverness the maid servant personally sees how cleverly Srimati came to meet Krishna and how cleverly she decorated the kuncha when the cuckoos the bees the birds the trees the winds and the deer of rindavana see how pitifully shrimati is separated from her beloved they all cry along with her feeling the same anguish seeing this the maid servant calls her vrindavan adhikarini the queen of vrindavan this is what gorachandra said my servants are feeling the same anguish we should feel what the radhikas servants maid servants are feeling their anguish for radhika has to be infused in our heart then we will become mad <laughs> their anguish which they are receiving from radhika has to be infused in the sadaka's heart in other words their love which they receive from radhika has to be infused in the sadaka's heart and it can be possible through lava matra just part and parcel of one second will be enough the sadaka receives this treasure of the heart of beloved guru manjari and others because radhika is the embodiment of cleverness and her maid servants are also embodiment of cleverness they know how to infuse the heart of honest sincere sadaka with very simple heart they know how to do it
And as Radhika is very cleverly appearing in Vrindavan with first how? With her golden aura. She is appearing. In the same way, her maidservants are infusing this golden aura in the heart of Sadak. And this golden aura, this golden light is Swarup. Which is coming from Radhika's golden aura of Mahabhav. She appears in Vrindavan first in the form of golden form. Then when Prabhupada Saraswati, who is sitting on the bank of Yamuna, sees this golden form, which pervading all Vrindavan, he jumps and he is receiving, receiving, receiving her beloved Swamini. So only thing which Sadaka has to do is to have a strong faith in love. Suddenly, a bluish aura illuminates the kuncha. The maid servant who suffers along with her swamini rushes out of the kuncha and sees that Shyama Sundara has arrived. Seeing how the fire of Srimati's anguish is extinguished by the ecstatic shower of her blissful meeting with Shyam, the maid servant says, All glories to the indescribable Queen of Vrindavan. Jai Shira. We can stop here. It's almost two o'clock. And next Saturday we can continue the pastime in the next verse. Thank you very much to all of you. I'm sorry for my mistakes and my egoistic behavior, but what can I do? Help me with your blessings. Radhe Radhe to everyone. Thank Radhe. you, Guru Chandra. And can I ask one question to Gora Chandra? Maya, I would like to ask you if you would like to read the German Zoom tomorrow. I'm not there tomorrow. Oh, okay. I'm traveling tomorrow. Oh, okay. Yes. Would be nice if we can have your darshan once more. Just let me know whenever you are ready and inspired to show us how to pick the cherries. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like to listen, not to read. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, if all are like yeah. this, then it will be a quiet Zoom by uh. Gurdiv also likes to listen. He sometimes comes to listen. He is not there. No, he's hiding today. You checked it too. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, maybe. So Not thank you. Me. No problem. Sorry, I just I said it here because you didn't answer my question when I wrote it in the chat. So I have to reorganize. Yes. And thank you, Goranga. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, Rasamayi.